In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get an NPC to fire off a Roblox rocket launcher. I have a little more sophisticated AI in this one. I'm gonna do a simple AI for the video, but it's basically gonna give you all you need to know to get the NPC to fire the rocket launcher. This is pretty cool. Ooh, we gotta watch this guy over here. If they get behind him, it's gonna get him. And of course I jacked up the power on my rocket launcher. But I thought that'd be pretty cool. See, he's finding the closest zombie available. Ooh, but not that one. Got him, oh no. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started with that. I have an empty base plate right here. There is nothing in my game. And the first thing I'm gonna do is add an avatar. So up here in the avatar tab, we're gonna click that. I'm gonna go over here where it says rig builder. Gonna click that. And then I'll pick R15, but you could do either one. And I like the mesh avatar, 2016 mesh avatar. Sweet. All right, now we got that rig right there. Let's go ahead and give him a name. I think it's not gonna be a very sophisticated AI, so I think I might call him Crazy Merle. There we go. And we need some body colors so we don't get moderated, right? They have body colors, but they're all the same color, which will still get you moderated. So let's go and I just delete it and get new ones. If you add the body colors, it'll give you a, a good selection. Another thing that we have to do so that our NPC can hold the rocket launcher correctly is we have to change this local script that says animate to a server script. So let's do that real quick. Hit the plus on Crazy Merle. And now we're gonna add a regular script. We are gonna call this animate just like the local script, but it's gonna be server. We're gonna get all of the stuff under animate starting with scale dampening percent go down to emote play, shift click, and I'm gonna drag that into animate. Sweet. Now I wanna get the code from the animate local script, double click, control A to select all, control C to copy, go to my animate script, and then I'll just highlight this, control V to paste. And now we have to get rid of that one thing that causes error, uh, it is this right here, right? We can't have a local player in a server script. So ah, I'm gonna delete that setup emote chat hook. And that should work. It'll still work with that code in there, but you'll get some errors in the output window and it'll make it complicated. All right, so let's get rid of this animate script right here, this local script. I'm just gonna delete it. You can leave it in. It's not gonna do anything. We might as well keep it as neat as possible. Now let's get our Roblox rocket launcher. I'm gonna go back to my scene view right here and then home. I'm gonna to go to toolbox under the creator store tab with model selected. I will just do rocket launcher. And you can see that I typed that in there before. Rocket launcher, sweet. And here's the Roblox one. It says by Roblox, let's drag it in here. Yup, there's four scripts. We're gonna say, okay. I'm gonna close my toolbox. I'm gonna grab this rocket launcher, I'm gonna drag it into Crazy Merle, and then we could check it out. See how he holds it. Play, and he's holding it. And that's because we have the server side animate script in there. If you just had the local, he'd probably just be standing straight. So we're gonna turn this off. Now let's open up this rocket launcher right here, and I have some client stuff, right? We don't need that. We're not gonna be able to use it. This is a remote function. It's a lot like a remote event. I'm gonna delete that too. I'm gonna to uh, control click these three. I'm gonna remove them, All right? Now on the rocket launcher itself, I'm gonna hit the plus. I'm gonna add a regular script, All right? And this is gonna operate, this is gonna be in place of that client script. It's gonna have the AI that fires the rocket launcher. I think let's just name it first so we don't get confused with just a script. How about, NPC shoot AI. So you know where to go in like a month if you wanna change that out. Now we need to talk to this server script via our NPC shoot AI. I am gonna use a bindable event. So on the rocket launcher, hit the plus, hit B, B, I maybe, bindable event. There we go. And then let me change this to, how about shoot BE for bindable event. Let's go up here in our NPC AI shoot. I'll select it so you don't get confused right here. NPC AI shoot. Let's get a reference to our rocket launcher. Uh, let's see, A-U-N-C-H-E-R, is that right? Launcher. All right, that's just script.parent. I wanna get the char, right? 
the character. So the rocket launcher, and then we'll go parent. We'll get a reference to our bindable event. I'll put a little space there for that. How about shoot BE for bindable event? We're gonna get that. It's on the rocket launcher. It is a child. So we'll do wait for child and then shoot BE. Let's do a task.wait because we are gonna automatically just start shooting this thing off when we play the game. Uh, this, is a, this is a very basic AI, right? We'll do a while. How about while true, do. Let's do another task.wait. We'll shoot this thing off, how about every two and a half seconds? Now the default time for reload on the rocket launcher is three. I'm gonna shorten that down to two seconds. Let's do, uh, let's get a reference for the humanoid root part of our, of our character, of our NPC, right? We'll do char, find first child. Ooh, look at that, it helped me out. Humanoid root part. And then I need to find the enemy position. So if you were to add more sophisticated AIs, and we'll beef this up a little bit at the end of the video. Not much. I want to keep it kind of simple. But this, the AI will find the enemy position that you're going to shoot at. Right? And then what we're, we're going to do is we're going to get the humanoid root part. We're going to get the initial position of the humanoid root part of our character, where we're standing. And then we're going to say HRP, C-frame, look vector. We're just going to shoot out straight. I don't know, maybe 50 studs, right? Just so that your position is, that you're aiming at is 50 studs in front of you. You know what? We should do a check for that HRP too. Let's do that. Make sure we still have it. So if HRP, then. And now we'll just cut and paste this, add that in that if statement. Control X, Control V. And what can we put in there? Oh, let's do the shoot. Let's do the shoot VE. Fire, right? And that's for the bindable event. You just hit fire. And we'll pass in the E position. I thought about sending in the character too, just to make sure that our bindable events aren't getting confused if we have multiple uh, instances of NPCs that can fire a rocket. I hadn't had any problem with that. Another thing you can do is if you have an owner of the NPC, a player, you could pass that in here too. The original client script that we deleted, I probably should have kept it there for reference, but uh, used a remote function to call this server script right here. So let's open the server script. We're going to have to make NPC shoot IA talk to this server script. I'm just going to go down through here and see what I want to keep. I want to make my reload time a little bit faster. I think I'm going to go with two seconds. And then rocket speed, I'm going to make it a little faster too. I'm going to go maybe with 100. You could do whatever you want with that. All right, the debris service, player service, we probably are not going to need, nor my player. Now, if you're keeping score for a player, you will need it, but we're not doing that in this video. I'm going to delete those two. Here, this mouse loc, I believe was the remote function. Let's delete it. We'll find out if we run into any problems. I don't think we will. I'm going to have to add a couple things, not many. I do need my, I'm going to get the character actually from the tool. So let's do local char. We have our tool script.parent, which is actually the rocket launcher. So they already have, they already have something in there for that. And then that parent would be the character. All right. And then we need our shoot BE, the bindable event, right? And that would be on the rocket launcher, which is the tool. So tool, wait for child, shoot BE. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see here we're making the part. Uh, they do it a little bit differently than what I normally do. It's not too bad though, it looks pretty easy. Oh, form factor, this is part size quantization which is no longer a thing, it's deprecated. So we can get rid of it. All parts can be customly sized, right? Now that's what it's for. Let's go down a little more. So they're using the old body forces. It still works so let's not mess with it. Uh, ooh, uh, my player. So we have a creator tag that's being made in the rocket. If we are gonna do scorekeeping for players, you could pass it in a player. I am just gonna put nil here. I'm not gonna get rid of the creator tag. I'm gonna keep it. Uh, just in case we need it later, but I'll put a nil. Let's go down on activated. 
we could see here, oh, the mouse loc, that is, that's the, uh, that's the remote function. So we were right, the uh, mouse loc was a remote function. I wanna go see what calls this first. Unactivated is a tool thing that you need players for. Yep, the player service. Here's the on equip. We can't, we're not gonna do that. You can do it, but we're not gonna do that. Um, he's always gonna have it. And then we can get rid of the equipped and the activated. Oh, this is where on activated is called when the tool is actually activated. That's when you click on something. I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna get my shoot BE and then dot event. I'm gonna connect that, not on activated. Let's change it to, how about on shoot? Whoops, there you go, on shoot. All right, so let's go up here. I'm gonna do a control C, so don't forget how I spelled it. On shoot, right? We're not gonna have the player, so I'm gonna get rid of this. Now the model is the character, and we do have a character. We got it up top, right? So let's put char there, and then instead of my model, char, find first child class of humanoid, and then we don't want to be shooting when we're dead, right? That's what it is. So we're going to get the chars, humanoid's health, make sure it's greater than zero. We could we can move this down, right? If we want to move it down, keep it all on one line, or not all on one line, but keep it all on the screen so you can see it. You can keep it on one line if you want. Now, before we forget anything, oh, that's nice. So we disable the tool. This is our debounce, right? We're just going to disable the tool. We're going to get rid of this but we're gonna need a position. Oh, you know what? That's gonna work out. Let's get rid of this because our NPC shoot IA sent the E position in the bindable event. Well, we are capturing the bindable event here. I'm just gonna say POS with a capital P so I don't have to change much code down in here. Now this here is pretty interesting. They use the brick color of the rocket so you don't kill friendlies based on the team player, on the team color. So you could change the color. You could change it to a team if you want. Uh, we're not going to get that far into it. I think I'm just going to set a brick color, new, and then we'll do like dark gray, right, for our rocket. How's that? Now we have basic functionality for our rocket launcher for our NPC. We did not do anything to ensure that friendlies don't get hurt. If you want to get into that, or you're going to ask me to do more of these videos. Let's see, server rocket is where that happens. This is a disabled script. It's added within our server script right here. This is server. If we go up to the top, when we create our rocket, come down here, we clone the rocket script, and then we add it to the rocket, right? We make the script the rocket script clone dot parent, the rocket. Inside rocket is where we have our blast radius and our damage and stuff like that, but also where we make sure not to hurt friendlies, right? So right here on explosion hit, you could see here, ooh, if it's the creator tag, right? Then go right through, right? Ooh, it says return, right? Return. If not, we're gonna do damage. That's also where we uh, check to make sure that the team color isn't the same for the player that got hit, all right? So if we go down here, this is where we do all the damage, and this is where we bail out if it's a friendly. We don't, we don't have that, but that's all right. This is still going to do a lot of stuff. All right, it's still going to be pretty good. So we got our little guy here. Let's stand in his trail. There we go. Boom. See, we did damage, like 60, and now we got killed on the second shot. But if I stand real close to him, he's going to die too. Well, 60. He's down to 60. Now we both died. All right. So here we're not protecting our friendlies. Yep. Old crazy Merle is gone. Let's add a little bit more to the AI part of our, of our, of our NPC. So turn this off. And then let's go back to NPC AI shoot. All right. I have it open. If you don't, it's in the rocket launcher right here. Now, I don't want to add too much AI because I have a whole channel for NPC AI that I'm developing out, but we could do a few things to make it interesting. I'm going to get rid of that line right there. Let's get a random number generator. So local RND, that'll be my variable for my random number generator. There's my class for my random number generator. So I'll say random.new. 
And let's go down to where we're doing our task.wait. Now remember, our reload is two seconds. So let's do two seconds. And then maybe we could do a task.wait for another second, anywhere between zero and one second. So how about random next number? That's the default, zero to one. We get our humanoid root part. Let's go down right here. I think I'm going to make a variable called rotate. And I'm going to get a random number. And let's rotate between, how about math.pi? So that is 80, 180 degrees. Let's do minus to positive pi, right? Because our uh, operation that we're doing on the next line is going to be in radians. So otherwise, I'd just put like 180, plus or minus 180 degrees. We'll get our HRP and we're going to rotate them, right? So we'll say HRP C frame times equals. We'll do the C-frame angles, and then just rotate on the Y, right? We just want them to, to turn in different directions. I'll just put rotate right here. So zero, rotate zero. And then this is good. We're just gonna have them shoot straight. We're just gonna change his rotation. I think this will be kind of interesting. Let's give it a shot. All right, let's hit play. And now you can switch directions really quickly. Yeah, he goes that way. And you never know where he's gonna go. Oh, kind of do know where he's gonna go, right? Let's say he's going in one direction. Nope, that's pretty good. Wait, oh, crazy Merle, now you don't know. You don't know what's going, what he's gonna do. We're gonna get more of them too. We get a bunch of crazy Merles. Let's try it out, that's, that's a good way to test it, right? Crazy Merle, Control D. Just move him over here, Control D. Move him back a little bit. Maybe we'll do three, right? Control D. And you got to try and survive. We have a four second wait. Boom. Oh, man. See, and they're kind of changing at different different rates because we have that randomization for the time. Ooh, look at that. Crazy Merle got Crazy Merle. That's pretty cool. All right, I will see you in the next video.